Hey everybody, welcome back to another popcorn. Thank you for clicking on this video. If you guys are new, my name is Stephanie. This past week, I took a week off from a filming and uploading just so I can catch up on a bunch of 2019 movies that I did not get a chance to see while in theaters. Also, we just had Black Friday, and of course, I picked up a bunch of movies, which at the end of this video, I'll go ahead and show you my little haul that I did. No video was taken while we were Black Friday shopping or anything. I'm just literally gonna show you what I purchased. So with that said, let's go ahead and get on with my number 10 pick, which was actually the easiest one out of all of them to kind of categorize all the other ones honestly was really really hard and i uh, will get to that as we go through it but my number 10 pick was aladdin it uh, came out may 24th and it was directed by guy Ritchie. it is two hours and eight minutes long and it is rated pg of course it is a live action remake which quite honestly i'm i've never been a fan of any live action that they've done so far i think with little mermaid coming out that kind of changes and hopefully that'll be my very first live action remake that i'll enjoy but other than that i really haven't liked too many of them um ariel and jasmine are actually my two favorite disney princesses and i was really disappointed in this movie i throughout the whole deal i'm just like no 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 i didn't even really want to watch it in theater that's also why i waited this long just because I just, the whole everything that kind of went along with it it just didn't intrigue me and I'm just like you're gonna ruin Aladdin for me like I prefer just to keep on and watching my cartoon Aladdin over this to me garbage I just, honestly I know a lot of people may actually really enjoy it let me know down below if this was an enjoyable movie for you I personally won't be re-watching Aladdin it's possibly one of my least favorite I don't know, Lion King is kind of down there as well for me. From here on, it was very, very difficult for me to actually categorize. Let me go ahead and get on with my number nine pick, which I'm going to get a lot of grief for, will be Captain Marvel. It is two hours and five minutes long. It is rated PG, came out March the 8th, and it was uh, directed by Anna Bolden and Ryan Fleck. I hope I'm pronouncing these names correctly. I'm now, I have seen in game so i kind of was introduced to captain marvel in that movie and so now with this i kind of got a little more sense of who she really was and kind of where she came from and also kind of where her relationship kind of started off with a fury and then of course we also get young rookie colson which i am a fan of because i do watch agents of shield we see how that like alien cat is the one that calls uh fury's eye patch situation here and Obviously, I'm going to be giving spoilers on some of these deals. I mean, they've been out for like ever and I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of different things about them. But if you haven't and you're like me and you're behind on stuff, spoiler alert. So yeah, I mean, I enjoyed Captain Marvel. It was really fun. It was entertaining. I would totally rewatch it. I would purchase it and everything. It's not one of the ones that I picked up on Black Friday because they didn't have it. Or if they did, I completely missed it. But we'll get to my haul later. And number eighth place would be one that I just saw today, Midsommar. Or Sumner. I've heard it both ways, but yeah, I know how I am with pronunciation. So it's one of the two, or it's neither one of them, and it's something completely different, but I think I know where I'm going with it. Um, it is rated R, it is considered a drama thriller, but it was actually um, promoted as a horror movie, which is why I did not want to watch it because. Again, y'all know how I am about her. Um, it is two hours and 18 minutes long. Came out July the 3rd. It is directed by Ari Aster, who actually uh, did his first film last year with Hereditary, which, of course, I did not see because, again, I heard that it was like a scary movie. And that one, I think it really is scary. So let me just kind of get to the actual film. I'm not really going to review a lot of the things that I'm talking about, but it was weird. So I don't, I don't know if it's this far down my list because I haven't fully, like, you know processed it but i mean obviously it's not at the very bottom because like i said just aladdin is just not for me it, it's nothing scary about it, 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 it as you can tell it's, it's really hard for me to to talk about but it is basically it's these kids who these college kids who are going to sweden because their swedish friend invited them to go because of the midsummer festival deal and then they go to like this little creepy ass town mind you the cinematography and the way that everything is shot is actually really beautiful they have a lot of really beautiful colors seeing that way that the movie kind of started off which is kind of like i don't know because how i feel about how it how it began which was with the sister basically you know killing the parents and like killing herself because i feel like the movie could have easily gone without that i mean i get where her mindset and like all her freaking out and like her panic attacks came 
because of what happened in the situation that happened with her family and you know but she could have easily just been somebody who has panic attacks and it could have been something that maybe happened in her past maybe they could have just mentioned this traumatic deal that happened now florence puke i don't know how to say her name the one that plays danny she does a really good job she does an amazing job because you really see the emotions i mean she goes through a lot of emotions in this film this film is definitely not for everybody like for sure not for everybody so let me just kind of give you like a quick as fast as i can recap about it so they do a lot of drugs in this um film um and it's you know the the townspeople are actually offering like the mushrooms and herbs and whatever else that they're doing like love potions that are like mm. and if you've seen the movie you you know what i mean by that mm, with that love potion <laughs> there is a lot of like graphic content as well um let's see here what would be a good way to put it um somebody throws themselves off a cliff and like the whole damn head like smush another one throws himself off the cliff like a dumbass instead of like coming down like this el pendejo like jumps straight like this so his legs just fucking break again youtube this is not for kids um especially with this movie <laughs> so yeah so legs break and he's still very much alive and somebody comes and like with this big old like hammer chingadera like old time medieval shit and like and like it's like a thing like four people that come and are like mm -hmm. so there's that also there is a lot of nudity in this film it is a slow based film but it's entertaining but it's weird I, I really don't know how I feel about it let me know down below if you saw Midsummer or Midsummer, whatever the hell it's called how did you guys feel about this movie? Like I said, I just finished watching. I saw four movies today, so I'm still technically trying to process it. But I do recommend for you to see. I think you you could definitely check it out. So let's go ahead and get on with my number seven pick, which would be Happy Death Day to You. And it is rated PG-13. It is considered a mystery slasher, an hour and 40 minutes long. And it came out February the 13th and directed by Christopher Landon. So Happy Death Day 2 actually literally follows how part one ended. And in this case, it's just a roommate that kind of is now looping. And then at the end, we do get the girl looping again. With the whole new, like, killer, we're actually in a whole new dimension. I really digged it. Um, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I enjoy a good slasher movie. That's right. I can do slasher. I just can't do horror, you guys. This uh, movie, we do find out that the whole reason that the loop was going on was because of a science experiment that uh, Ryan was doing, which is Carter's uh, roommate. That I kind of was hoping that we would kind of cut to the tree that was in her universe just to see how she was reacting, especially with her mom being, you know, dead. But we did it. We stayed in the one universe, which I wasn't mad at. But honestly, I really enjoyed the sequel. I mean, it was pretty predictable. I pretty much guessed who the killer were pretty early on as soon as the movie started to my sister I said is that the killer she obviously says she don't remember but I think she remembers she didn't want me to tell you because I, I love spoilers um yeah she just pretty much shuts me up by saying I don't remember and can't really get her out of that I would totally recommend I would rewatch it um obviously I would rewatch it in order I know a lot of you are probably like really Stephanie you have this as your number seven you have Captain Marvel as your number nine I know you guys I know but again remember this is my list and there is no wrong list there is no wrong rankings you know everybody has their preference it's not getting nasty in the comment section that's what's fun about it you know we obviously are all going to disagree and we're moving right along to my number six pick which is spider-man far from home that one is rated pg-13 it was two hours and nine minutes long directed by john watts i mean it sucks that his vacation was hijacked by fury you know it does take place after iron man dies spoiler alert if you haven't seen endgame or if you just haven't seen anything because you know it's been like, everywhere that he's dead i'm gonna be honest with you guys i was a little bit like off when i first saw the trailers about um jake jim hall being in this film as mysterio it was just like i don't know i don't know how i feel about you being in these type of movies i really enjoyed his performance i really like dig him as mysterio and he was like the perfect like good guy bad guy because he obviously had that other 
alternative motive, which was obviously not too much of a superhero move, regardless if he did want to be a superhero. So let's move on to my top five. We are just about finished, you guys. So coming in at number five would be Crawl. It is rated R and it's a drama thriller and it's an hour and 27 minutes long. Came out July the 12th and it is directed by... Let me see if I can do the accent. It's a French guy. It's not gonna help because I'm still gonna botch it. Alexandre Aja? We're gonna go with that. Typically the father-daughter gets stuck in the old family home in the middle of a category like five hurricane somewhere in Florida in the swamp. There are a bunch of like huge alligators. I honestly thought there was only going to be like two, maybe four tops, but there seemed to be a shitload. And they really had their eye at, on this house. Yes, I know that this movie is not the best, but it is highly entertaining, which is what it's meant to be, you guys. It was really like, talking about that thriller, you guys, it really had me like, whoo. I felt all the emotions that this film wants you to feel. I felt them all. Did have a few scenes where I was just like, what the fuck? Like seriously? Well, I think it's actually just one scene that I'm just like, what the hell are you doing? Because all the other ones, technically the people that were around didn't know what was happening. So we'll let it pass with that. But with the girl, knowing that there was an alligator there or crocodile, whatever the hell it is. When she was going, you know, around to get the damn phone, ooh, I'm just like, this bitch did not just stay there while the damn crocodile is around the corner knowing good and well it's probably going to come up and, like, get you. And you're over here calling for help. Why on earth do you not move around and go back to where you were with your father? Like, no, you stay there. And then, of course, the phone gets dropped again and the alligator, of course, like, steps on it. Because, I mean, it's predictable. I was just like, is this damn dog going to make it? Like, sugar? Like, I'm just like, if they kill this dog, I'm going to freak out. Because, like, take the damn dad. The whole time, I'm just like, oh my god. I don't think it's gonna survive. I don't think it's gonna survive. I think this dog is going to try to do a brave thing and save his owner and might just like, you know, jump in there with his little self. It's not even a big dog, you guys. And just kind of be brave and like try to take a bite off of this croc down and gonna do shit to it. One of the crocs is just gonna hit him with his big ass tail and it's gonna like kind of ping pong it into the other crocs like mouth and it's gonna like be the end of sugar. Crawl was very entertaining. It, it's not the best film that there is, but it was entertaining and had me on the edge of my seat. I enjoyed myself throughout the whole deal. Well, mind you, the beginning probably like, I don't know, like 15 minutes was kind of a little bit dull. Obviously, you're setting up the story. I enjoy movies like that. Like the garbage movies, the trash movies, like if they're done a certain way, like I can dig it like this. Deep Blue Sea is another one. Honestly, I... <laughs> The one that I'm, um, a shark movie or a shark series, and some of you might know where I'm going with this by now, that I'm not particularly proud of actually enjoying. And literally every time I finish watching it, I'm just like, what the fuck did I just watch? It would be the Shark Needle movies, you guys. Yes, I've seen those and they're trash. They're absolute garbage, but they know what they are. That's what they're making. This is not as bad as Sharknado though, like nothing is as bad as Sharknado. So moving along with my number four pick, it is actually one that I have been wanting to watch for a long time and I finally got to it and it is The Farewell. It is rated PG and it's a drama, it's also considered a comedy. Yeah, I'll probably hear my baby girl right coming around, she's gonna come on. Gaga, with my bad mamas. It's a foreign movie. It does have subtitles. It is an hour and 40 minutes long. It came out July the 19th. Um, Aquafina stars in this film. It may make it into my top 10 of the year. So The Farewell is based upon a Chinese lie. When the family member is diagnosed with cancer, they actually withhold that information. And the family actually doesn't really want her to go to China to go and say goodbye. But she does have this very loving relationship with her grandmother. They are always calling each other on the phone and checking up on each other they do say that aquafina is just too like emotional and she's not gonna be able to hide how she feels and of course she is against the family not telling the grandma that she does have cancer there are a lot of emotions going on in this film i didn't cry i think i teared up just like a little bit 
but I, I never like full on like cried. I do feel like this film deserves a foreign film nomination at the Oscars. I don't think it's gonna win. I mean, I personally have not seen Parasite, but I hear nothing but amazing, amazing things about it. So The Farewell, it is a beautiful story and I do recommend for you to check it out. Either stream it, buy it, or rent it on Redbox, which is what I did. So coming in in third place would be The Peanut Butter Falcon. It is rated PG-13. It is a drama comedy. It is an hour and 37 minutes long. Came out March the 9th. Now this was my number two pick, but then but one of the movies that I saw today kind of like pushed it into third place. It does star uh, Shia LaBeouf, which I am a huge Shia LaBeouf fan. I, yes, he is kind of like weird, but I'm here for it. And I just think he's such a hottie. If you are also a Shia LaBeouf fan, just know that he is a shirtless in this film and he is very... It also stars Dakota Johnson and Zach Goddess Jim. I know I botched that up completely, you guys. Zach... Zach plays Zach in the film <laughs> and um, he is somebody who has Down syndrome and he's basically uh, living in a retirement home. Dakota Johnson is basically like his social worker and Shia LaBeouf plays Tyler which he's a mess you guys. He's like this fisherman who's like stealing stuff but he's just a mess. I love the way that Tyler just treated Zach like a regular person. He didn't see a kid with Down syndrome like literally there was this one part when Zach tells him I have Down syndrome and Tyler's just all like I don't care like so what like I'm not gonna treat you differently I, I respected him that he did not like treat him like a kid with special needs babied him and just treated him like a regular human being and I know some of you are probably like what the hell I mean my brother has special needs so just know that we as a family do not like when somebody talks down to my brother we don't need you to be like oh my god jesse no no he is 26 years old you talk to him like you're talking to me watch the movie so you can see how he treats him and how they form this friendship this really beautiful friendship eleanor which is played by dakota catches up to them you kind of see that whole babyness kind of going on like helping him put the shirt on and tyler's like you're gonna do that like don't do that like He's 20 something years old, he's like 23, like he doesn't need your help. But what she doesn't really know that she is treating him differently because she feels like she's treating him just fine, like, you know, no, I'm good, like I love him and I respect him. And as the story continues and Eleanor tries to continue to baby Zach, Tyler basically calls Eleanor out and is all like, you need to stop calling him retarded. Obviously Eleanor gets offensive and is all like, I have never. And then Tyler's all like, well you might not necessarily call him retarded, but you do treat him like that. I really, really appreciated and respected that scene. It's not necessarily in the words that you say, but it also is in the actions that you do. And I may be a little bit biased because I do have somebody with special needs, but I I really, I loved it. I, I, I really did. And I full, full, full on recommend for you guys to check it out. All right, final two. And it is going to be an animated film and a comedy because... Those are my favorite type of movies. So coming in, in second place, which bumped down the Peanut Butter Falcon, is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. It is rated PG. It is an hour and 44 minutes long. It came out February the 22nd, and it is directed by Dean DeBlois. That's what it's going to be. First thing I'm going to say, I cried. Of course I cried. If you saw this movie and you did not cry, do you have a heart? This movie, I feel, was such a great ending to this trilogy of How to Train Your Dragon. The Hidden World, I feel like, should honestly get an Oscar nomination. I mean, it's not going to win. Unfortunately, How to Train Your Dragon is always up against something better. Mind you, I really, really love the film. But at the end, I feel like the animated feature is going to come down to uh, Frozen 2 and Toy Story 4. I, it, that's what I feel is going to I said it in uh, one of my other videos. But the hidden world is so beautiful and I really loved all the flashbacks that we got with a like, little hiccup and the dad with Dickie Draw Butler back to voice the papa in this film. Toothless, which I freaking love Toothless, he's so cute. 
he finds himself a, a pretty little gal which uh, they decided to name her the Light Fury and he ends up learning some new tricks that he's able to do. It was really funny when you know Hiccup was trying to give uh, Toothless some advice and some moves on what to do to try to uh, the Light Fury could fancy him some more and he was actually failing and at some point Toothless was all like I'm over you, like I'm gonna do my own thing and I'm gonna try to, you know, conquistarla my way. We also get them moving their village, which is called Burke, I think, um, to a new location when they were trying to find a new safe place for the dragons. It didn't quite officially work out for the safety, but the villagers thankfully did love the new land better than where they were at, so they did you know end up staying there. Of course we flash forward to the future and Hiccup and Astrid do get married and they have their family and then you know, they end up taking a little boat ride and they go to go introduce the kids to Toothless. Toothless and the uh, Light Fury also have their family going so it is just such a perfect ending you guys. I know I just told you the whole ending with that one but like I said spoilers. So we made it you guys and we're finally up to my number one pick and that would be Booksmart. It is rated R. It is a comedy and it's an hour and 45 minutes long. It is directed by Olivia Wilde which was her directorial debut. And I guess technically it is the girl version of Superbad, but honestly, and I love Superbad, you guys. I really like that's like one of my favorite movies. This to me kicked Superbad's ass, like full on. Like I enjoyed this movie over Superbad. So the movie takes place before graduation, and of course there's this huge like party that one of the jocks is throwing. And when Molly ends up finding out that a lot of the uh, kids there who were just like party people and like basically being free spirited and doing drugs and everything were also getting into Yale which she was getting into Yale and like Stanford and Harvard and one of them had a job at Google already she was like freaking out so they're trying to get to this party that they don't even know where it's at they up going to like two different parties before they actually end up to the one that they're wanting to go to and just their journey to get there is just so hilarious. So Billy Lord comes out in this movie as well and I absolutely loved her in this movie. She plays Gigi. She's just so like out there and I loved her in this movie. She ends up popping up in all these parties. I was laughing like so hard like i was literally like me slapping i i don't even think i laughed that hard when i was watching super red to be honest with you they have a lot of crazy moments in this film there is this one scene that involves the principal who's also a part-time uber driver okay you know what I'm, I'm not gonna tell you guys because i really want you to <laughs> to experience it but i'm just gonna set it up for you it involves the principal in the car and a porn video we're gonna leave it with that. Is it shot perfectly? No. I mean, it does have its flaws. Is the storyline predictable? Obviously. Is it something that we've seen before? Yes. It's a comedy and I love comedy, so that's why it's my number one. So those are the uh, 10 2019 movies that I had not seen and my little reviews on that. Um, if you've seen the movies, what did you guys think about it? Um, how would you rank them? All right, so let's go ahead and get on with my Black Friday movie haul. And it's actually not that many. I know some of you are like stuff and that's a lot of movies. No, for me, trust me, I usually get more movies in this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just say this right now. I'm probably going to be the only like movie critic, YouTuber that you will find that still just gets regular DVDs. Like I'm not really about that Blu-ray 4K live. I don't have a 4K TV, so I don't need that. And I do have a Blu-ray player. I think I do, but quite honestly, you guys, I really don't see the difference. I mean, if there's a Blu-ray movie that you honestly see like a big difference to, let me know down below which one you recommend where you're like, look, this one is like awesome in Blu-ray. So let me know down below. I'll check it out and I'll see. But to me personally, I don't see a difference. Um, I don't think it's worth the money, in my opinion. So just know that I am not one that will push Blu-ray on you. And if you are like me and still enjoy a good regular old DVD, then you know what? Like this video because we, we like this. We, we don't need that fancy stuff. We're, we're good. I still see the movie. So, all right. So I'm just going to sh quickly show you guys what I have because I know this video is very long. Plus, some of these are actually from the ones that I just talked about recently. So, first off. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World, number two pick. 
Craw, which actually this is the first movie that I have purchased without watching it. I was like kind of hesitant, but it was really, you know, obviously Black Friday, it was cheap. I was like, you know what? I heard pretty good things about it and I've talked about it enough. Um, Spider-Man Far From Home, talked about that today. One of my favorite movies of the year, Five Feet Apart. I do want to watch it one more time before the official end of the year to see if it's still in my top 10 because it was on my top 10 when I did my best of 2019 so far. So I really, really loved it. I cried so much. Full on recommend for you guys to see this movie. It's such a sweet, sweet movie. And then I have Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, because I enjoyed it. I know some people were not that fond of it. Obviously, I prefer the OG Jumanji, but it is very entertaining. I love Kevin Hart, and I really, really enjoyed this movie, and I'm looking forward to um, the second one. Then my number one pick, Booksmart. It was actually the first movie that I saw when I walked up to the uh, movies, and I told my sister, get it, Booksmart, get it, get it. Uh, so again, full on recommend that. Um, I forgot The Kid That Would Be Keen. This is actually a really underrated movie. I do have a review up on this. It's actually one of the first ones that I did when I first started up my channel. Um, I'll link it down below and I'll have it come up, whatever, you know. I think it came out this way. Um, very underrated. I really, really, really enjoyed this movie. It's a great family movie. I, I really wish there was more talk about it, but it is really, really cute. And I really, really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to re-watching it. So my final two movies, um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse in one best animated feature last year at the oscars um i actually just saw it this year i actually saw it on the plane ride so i kind of want to rewatch it again just so i can really see it like on a bigger screen but i saw it on netflix but now i have it uh final movie is quentin tarantino's reservoir dogs fun fact i don't think i've actually ever seen this movie i know right horrible like i said i'm a horrible film critic but i saw it the price was good and i was like you know what let me get it so what do you guys think about my haul let me know down below which one did you like i know some of you are probably like none of them but you know what i bought them i loved them let me know down below what your movie haul was for black Friday like how many did you get like I said this is a little bit of movies for me I usually get more but um so it's next year All right. so that is it I hope you guys enjoyed my rankings I hope you enjoyed my haul what have you guys not seen yet for 2019 and you're like looking forward to watching before the end of the year let me know down below but before you guys click out of this video don't forget to give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post something new and until next time I'll be seeing you guys at concessions bye